Welcome everyone to My Weight Live. Endocrinologist Dr. Dawn Smiley Bird is here with us tonight talking about the science of weight loss and how our weight can impact our health for a very special World Obesity Day episode. Before we get started though, tell me where you're watching from and what's on your mind. Dr. Smiley Bird, I'd like to start off by talking about probably the biggest weight loss myth that's out there, which is that to lose weight and keep it off for good, all we have to do is eat less and move more. As an endocrinologist, tell us about what's happening in our bodies that can make weight loss more complicated than that. There's truly a physiologic process underlying that is fighting against us every time we try to lose weight. And we term that metabolic adaptation. And that metabolic adaptation is going to encompass three different phenomenon, if you will. So one is that the appetite simulating hormone called ghrelin is going to increase as time goes on. And it's going to cause us to eat more. And those appetite suppressing hormones in our body, that's going to gradually decline. The other thing that's happening in the backdrop is that when we're losing weight, our total metabolic expenditure is going to decrease, particularly our resting metabolic expenditure. So what I hear you saying is there are kind of three main processes that are working against us when we lose weight. Hormones that make us hungrier go up, yes. hormones that make us feel full go down, and the metabolism decreases. That is quite a triple whammy. No wonder so many people do regain weight over time. Absolutely. So this is one of the reasons why I tell my patients this is not your fault. Friday, March 4th is World Obesity Day, and that is because the American Medical Association recognizes obesity as a chronic disease. Tell us what about obesity made healthcare professionals recognize it as a chronic medical condition? A chronic medical condition is going to be one that's longstanding. And we know as it relates to obesity or a higher BMI, that comorbidities can coexist, such as sleep apnea, problems with fertility, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, stroke, as well as arthritis. And we know that if we actually help to lower that BMI, then we can stave off some of those comorbidities as time goes on. Additionally, we know that having a higher BMI, particularly for those patients between the ages of 20 and 30, is going to actually connote a higher mortality rate for those individuals in the sense that they have a decrease of life expectancy over time. And so again, that's why it's so critical to start early on in the process of talking to our patients about their weight management. Well, I think when we talk about, you know, improved health when we lose weight, people think I need to lose 100 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, to be healthier. Right. And really, that's not the case. There are big benefits to losing even a small amount of weight. Talk, talk about what some of those are. A patient may not want to just lose you know, 10 pounds or 20 pounds, but I think that's a good initial goal because we want to make sure that it's feasible for them and we have a good plan of action. And then we build on that. So I always encourage my patients to lose 5% at first. And why do I use 5%? Because the medical literature supports 5% weight reduction that goes along with improvement in not only blood pressure, but also total cholesterol levels and high triglyceride levels. So we always can start there and not only see that the patient will have improvements in the way that they feel in many cases, but also in their biochemical profiles too, from the metabolic standpoint. So I always encourage them that 5%, that's not bad, and it's definitely better than gaining 5%. So I think sometimes when we talk about all the different ways that our weight can impact our health, that can feel really discouraging to people because they say, I've tried everything and I've yes. never been able to keep the weight off. But there are medical treatments now that can help people be more successful, whereas in the past they've not been able to be. So talk about those medical treatments, what they are and how they can help. Absolutely. Anzali, we now have in our armamentarium several different FDA-approved weight loss medications that can help patients but I would also put the caveat in there that it should be done in conjunction with lifestyle modification, meaning that we need to make sure patients are having the appropriate meal planning, but also exercise is also crucial. And we know from studies in the past that when we actually pair the weight management with lifestyle modification and an, a good pharmaceutical agent for weight loss, then we will actually be able to let that patient be even more successful with their weight loss. For those of you just joining us, we're here with endocrinologist Dr. Dawn Smiley Bird talking about the science of weight loss and how our weight can impact our health. And we are giving away some delicious healthy breakfast recipes to everyone who answers our trivia question, which is true or false, not all heart attacks involve chest pain. 
Is this true or false? Put your best guess in the comments, and regardless of whether you're right or not, you will get those tasty breakfast recipes. I have to say that the overnight oats are my favorite. If someone has been making a lot of lifestyle changes and they are really doing their best in terms of trying to eat healthy and get that activity you were talking about, how might someone figure out whether exploring a weight loss medication would be the right next step for them? It's going to start off with having that conversation with the healthcare provider. Uh, and when we look at data over the years, we know that patients are certainly more successful when they partner with their healthcare provider. So that would be the first step. And then when they do go in, they want to ask those pointed questions. What else can I do in addition to my lifestyle modification that I've already instituted to help me to lose weight? I think it's also important for the patient to tell the healthcare provider exactly what they're doing for the weight loss because they may be doing supplements or they may be taking medications or they may be doing certain meal planning that could actually be going against what their goals are. So it's important for that healthcare provider to be able to pull out some of those stops, if you will. And then the onus is passed to the healthcare provider to share what options that patient may have as far as pharmaceutical management. Well, I'm so glad to be talking about this because I think sometimes when people are thinking about weight loss, they just say, I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. But in fact, as you were just alluding to, a doctor can help in so many areas. So uh, for that patient watching at home who's feeling like, ah, I just need to work harder, why can seeing a doctor make such a difference? Again, because you'll have that support piece. You'll have that partnership piece. And I think that if the patient is comfortable with it, they should bring one of their partners from home in because you want to have that accountability piece to go along with it too. So with that being said, I think it's so important for the patient to know that they have partners and they have support in it. And in order to do that, they have to get their primary care or their healthcare professional involved. I know for many people, the idea of bringing up weight with their doctor can be intimidating. Any suggestions for the folks watching at home about you know, how to get that conversation started and what the doctor might be thinking about when they bring it up? So for people at home, I think that one of the things that you can do is get in front of the mirror and practice. Practice those things that you really want to ask. You know, uh, hey doc, you know, um, I would like to lose weight. What can I do for this? Also, again, mention what you've done in the past. What's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? And then be sure to talk about the risk and the benefits of the medications, particularly the side effect profile, so it will help you better determine what would be a good fit for you. We have heard from so many women on the page that they go through menopause and it's like, where did this weight come from? Mm -hmm. Why does that happen and what can we do about it? Yes, I see it in practice all the time. And it's not just about menopause. It starts well before that when patients are in perimenopause. And I think one of the biggest things that healthcare providers can do is to warn them ahead of time that you're going to have to change what you do. And it's interesting, one of the responses that I get sometimes is I haven't done anything differently. And my response is, well, you're gonna have to do something differently because what's happening is that the metabolism is declining as time goes on. So you said you tell your patients, okay, you haven't done anything different, but now you're going to have to do something different. What are those things that you recommend to them that they start changing? One of the things that I tell my patients to do is to pay attention to what they're eating now, okay? And if they really want to start something that's very easy to do, just take a dietary log so that we can talk about the amount of calories that you're taking in and then figure out which ones we can cut. You'd be surprised at the amount of sugar we could cut just by taking out a soda pop or two or taking out that glass pack of candy uh, out of the day because the day is so stressful. Uh, and also maybe just taking that one last lap down the aisle in the grocery store just to get a few more steps in. But all these things, they play a role with each other and every little bit helps. One other thing that I tell my patients is when they go to a restaurant, because we are social creatures, is to maybe tell the wait staff to put half of their food in the box before they even bring it out to the table. So plate half of the food. It gives you this idea that, wow, look at my plate. It looks so great. Uh, I, I'm going to finish my food, okay, because it's so good. But then you really didn't finish that full serving. And you save yourself some calories along the way. And then you have lunch for the next day as well. I know there are physicians out there, and, and probably folks watching at home have seen them, where the physician just says, you just need to lose weight. And they don't provide 
you know, any other structure or support. If that were to happen to someone watching at home, what would you suggest that they do? So I would definitely recommend that they go back to their primary care physician and say, that's great. Okay. Or their, their healthcare provider say, that's great. I know I need to lose weight, but I need some tools. I need some help to do this. And that's why I'm coming to you. And one of the biggest things that you may be able to do is make a pointed appointment for just this conversation alone with nothing else involved so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about your weight, the journey that you've been on, and where you'd like to go. So one thing that I hear you talk about that I hear a lot of physicians who are weight management experts talk about is the need to shift from kind of short-term thinking, mm -hmm. like I'm going to go on this diet for three months and then it's going to be fixed, to more of a long-term plan, long-term sustained behavior change. How do you talk to your patients mm -hmm. about shifting that mindset? Well, one of the things that I make them think about is this didn't happen overnight. Okay. You didn't get here overnight. So we're not going to get to your goal overnight either. This is going to be a journey. It's not a race. So I want that to be so clear to the audience that we want to be able to support them for the long haul of it. Because in a lot of cases, when patients have that short-term fix, they regain it and they regain it back to the baseline, if not more than they lost initially. So the patients that you work with, what would you say the biggest challenge they have with sustained behavior change is, and how do you encourage them to address it? There's so many barriers that can come up, but in my experience, the biggest that I've heard are the people that are around them at home, okay? Uh, either that or their lifestyle uh, as it relates to their job. So that's why I have a conversation about accountability and why it's so important to partner up with someone. It may not be your significant other in the home. It may not be your teenager, <laughs> but at least find someone who's going to hold you accountable to say, hey, how are you doing? Uh, and I think that the other part of that is where the healthcare provider comes in. And we do know that with weight loss management programs, then insurance companies will cover patients to come in and have those conversations and have those weigh-ins and have those discussions about what the barriers are and how you can overcome those barriers. It doesn't happen overnight, but it certainly can come up. It can actually be overcome with time and with a good plan of action. We've heard several physicians talk about how important it is to have a specific plan mm -hmm. and one that you develop in conjunction with your physician. When you sit and work with your patients, what are the components of that plan that you want to make sure that they're, they're addressing? Lifestyle modification, of course. So what are we doing? Tell me what you're eating, how frequently you're eating, what time you stop eating is during the day. Uh, are you eating breakfast or not? Not saying that that's for everybody, but we still want to make sure that you're getting sufficient calories in and not putting your body in that starvation mode cycle. The other part is how much exercise are you able to achieve? And I want people to understand that that does not mean that they have to go to the gym. They don't have to be on a bicycle that is the latest and the greatest, uh, but they just have to move, just move. And even if you're in your office at your desk, they even have the desk where they can be lifted. You can stand up and you can move your feet a little bit. I do it at my office too, okay? Uh, but there's so many different ways that we can just get moving. A part of that plan is to see how successful we are with what we're doing. And if we're not moving anything, then we need to come back to that plan, restructure it, and then figure out what we can add to it, whether it be changing the exercise routine, changing what you're doing with your diet, or adding a medication or changing a medication that may be inhibiting your efforts for weight loss. What is the number one thing you wish people knew about weight loss? The number one thing, there's so much that I would love to say, but that it's doable. It's, it's doable, it's achievable. It may be slow, it may not be what you expected, and it's hard work. At the end of the day, it is hard work, but I want people to be encouraged and know that this is doable. Dr. Smiley Bird, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Ansley, for having me. I really enjoyed this. 
And thank you to everyone watching at home. I hope you learned as much as I did. Before we go, I'd like to share the answer to tonight's trivia question. True or false, not all heart attacks involve chest pain. The answer is true. A study of more than 1.1 million heart attack patients published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that 31% of men and 42% of women didn't have any chest pain before being hospitalized. All the more reason to know the other signs of a heart attack, especially for the women out there watching tonight. We would like to thank Novo Nordisk for their support of this program. Novo Nordisk is not responsible for the content of the show, nor have they influenced it in any way. I'd like to encourage you to visit truthaboutweight.com to learn more about the science of weight loss. And we will post resources on our page in the next few days about World Obesity Day so you can learn more. We'll be back with you for another show on Tuesday, March 29th. Can't wait to see you then. Don't forget to send a text message to 404-737-0767 to get alerted when the show starts so you can join the conversation in the comments. Until then, please take good care and good night.